Matt Suter's survival testifies to the human skeleton's extraordinary resilience. But when we consciously want to test our strength, our muscles and bones collaborate to give us maximum power. The human body has resources far beyond what we can imagine. In a true test of muscles, how does the body's ultimate strength measure up? How far can we go when life hangs in the balance? We each have incredible strength inside, far more than we know. A normal person can move as much as this guy, but only in a crisis. It's a little steep here. Pinned beneath a 1,200 pound rock, sliding toward a cliff and certain death, a climber finds power in his muscles far beyond normal limits. The Sandia Mountains in New Mexico test many climbers. Their granite faces are notoriously unstable. It's a little steep here. Mark was in front, and I lost my footing just a little. And by instinct to catch myself, I reached over and put my hands on the wall. And that's when all hell broke loose. The wall essentially came off in my hands. This thing was huge. And how it didn't crush him to death, I don't know, but I, I just watched him and I couldn't believe he was actually still alive. The rock slab has trapped Sinjin. It could crush his ribs, but with his arm muscles, he's able to hold it off. But only just. Worse, he's on a sloping ledge. He's sliding toward a high cliff and doom. He's stunned and in shock, but his body has gone into overdrive. Sinjin's survival depends on what's locked in the muscles of his arms, chest, and shoulders. But how can mere muscles move something that massive? Muscle tissue works by contracting, pulling on bone, using it like a lever. These contractions occur microscopically. Each of Sinjin's muscles has thousands of individual fibers, bundled like wires in a cable. As we age, muscles may get bigger or smaller, but we're born with every muscle fiber we'll ever have. Within each fiber are yet smaller filaments. To activate the muscle, chemicals trigger neighboring filaments to ratchet together, intermeshing like locked fingers. As they slide past each other, the whole muscle fiber shortens. These contractions drive all our muscle movement. Yet the big surprise is that most of us use only about a third of our muscle fibers at any one time, even when we feel we exert ourselves. It's the way our muscles deliver power most efficiently. But if Sinjin's going to stay alive, he has to do something different and move a rock weighing more than half a ton. He's unleashed all the power in his muscles. Sinjin heaved a boulder weighing 1,200 pounds, one and a half times the world bench press record. Under normal circumstances, there's no way I would have been able to lift that rock even a little bit, let alone lift it all the way off of my body. Sinjin! Don't move! Don't move! Don't move! Injured! 
Sinjin could do the impossible because his brain activated all the fibers in his muscles at the same time. The resulting power was so great, he risked ripping muscle from bone. But in a flash of instinct, Sinjin's brain made a life-saving decision, triggering every single fiber in his arm and shoulder muscles. Together, they fired in one violent push. Most people can't consciously or voluntarily make their muscles do that. It usually requires some unique situation. An emergency is a perfect example of a situation where you need a great amount of force. Your body synchronizes instantaneously and you get this huge burst. I want to call for some help, okay? That power carries a cost. In saving his own life, Sinjin severely hurt his arm muscles. With the level of pain that I was realizing that I was in, there was blood everywhere, uh, you know, things were ugly. Not going anywhere, all right? But he survived. <laughs>